is sanity. Price to pay for entertainment. Q intro. This is the part where I throw my sanity right out the window. You know, I honestly don't think this kind of list needs an introduction at this point. Bosses are just the most talked about topic in video game countdowns, and bad bosses are simply no exception. Basically, when you have a game that is full to the brim with all kinds of awesome boss battles that are fun, challenging, and test your skills appropriately, there's always going to be just that one boss that just kills the enjoyment and wears it as a hat. Or just makes you laugh because of how pathetic they are, either way, it's sort of the same case. Now, this isn't a list of bosses that absolutely everybody finds bad. I mean, like, least favorite bosses is in the title instead of worst bosses for a reason as these are just the bosses that annoy me the most because of my own personal experiences. You happen to like one of these fights? That's grand. I'm not gonna go mental on you. Just respect that this is my own opinion, and yours will be respected as well. Simple as. Now, that all that's out of the way, get whatever you use as a stress relief, and let's get this show on the road. I've referred to the original Ratchet and Clank a few times, and despite the negative things I've said, I still consider it to be a damn fine game. It's primitive compared to later entries, but it's still a joy to play and really that's what matters the most. I mean in fact if strafing was available in this game, and no I don't mean from the hover pack, that sucks, it'd probably rival up your arsenal and tools of destruction as my favourite Ratchet game. Just too bad that the final battle with Drek, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I mean Ultimate Supreme Executive Chairman Drek. <laughs> had to pretty much bring out all the problems I have with this game. I'm not saying this fight is objectively bad or anything, but I will say that it is quite a pain in the tail end for me. The fight starts off with a giant robot battle where you battle Drek and his mech with giant Clank. Once you reduce his health a bit, he will shrink the Clank back down to normal, and you have to fight him for yourself. The fight is split into different sections, which are divided by a series of platforming sections with a huge bottomless pit beneath you. Drek starts out by firing a ton of missiles at you and shooting bombs with an obnoxiously large blasting radius. Then he starts using mines to home in on you. The third phase is where shit really hits the fan. He first reveals that he actually polluted the Blargian homeworld, and then he went around destroying other worlds to create his new world for one thing and one thing only. Cash and lots of it. Then he reveals that he will pollute his new world when the inhabitants move in to start the cycle all over again. This basically means that he's just a typical corrupt businessman. So, so much for genuine motives. Even then, what the hell's he gonna do with all that cash when it comes to the point where he can't make a new world? Cause you know, all the others will be gone. In any case, he has all his previous attacks from before, but now he can use his own agents of doom. He will come towards you with a flame ring, and when he's down to his last stretch of health, it becomes utter bullet hell when he starts shooting green missiles that stick into the ground and explode after a few seconds. Throughout the final phase, you also have to hit a switch to stop a timer that will cause an instant defeat if it reaches zero. And if you die anywhere in the fight, you have to start all over again with the only checkpoint being after Clank's phase. Combined with not being able to strafe and no quick select pause, don't be surprised if you lose track of what's going on and end up getting your butt handed to you on a silver plate. Unless of course you have the Rhino. But good luck getting that thing without the bolt glitch. Now, if there's anything I can say about this fight, is that it has a brilliant setup, and it has what I personally believe to be the best final boss theme in the main series. But still, the rest of the fight is kind of a get on the list. But those two factors prevent it from being any higher. Now, if only I could be as positive about the next few entries. Well, I haven't gotten the chance to talk about this game for a while. Kid Icarus Uprising still stands as an all-time favourite of mine, even though it has been admittedly trumped by a few other games that I got to play afterwards. But even then, the gr gameplay, the graphics, the characters, everything about it makes it an instant classic for me. Though looking back, a lot of the bosses did actually seem rather standard. 
Of course, because I brought up this game, you expected Hades Harsh, or Arm Pyron, am I right? If so, then I was right, but you're wrong! You see, at least for those fights, you could actually use your quick reflexes to effectively dodge, and you could also counter their attacks with powers and such. Whereas with the Arm Generator, yeah, that's not the case. At all. The fight takes place on grind rails. Yep, grind rails. In other words, if you brought a weapon with a short range, or any bow that isn't the boss for a bow, you are as good as dead when you enter the room. Basically, you fight this thing by just holding down the fire button and switch rails when you can. You're told by Prof Professor Palatina here that you can switch rails depending on your weapon. Well, I say just switch to the rail where you're least likely to be killed. You see, since this fight is on grind rails, you can't dodge any of the generator's attacks. Then Pyron comes in and being the genius that he is, he shoots the generator, causing some shields to form around it that reflect your shots if you hit them, and they give you very small areas to shoot. Oh, and you got even more stuff coming at you that you can't dodge. This fight is basically a census endurance. Just shoot when you have an opening, and hold to god that you can destroy the generator before it kills you. This fight is on here simply because of how freaking boring it is as there's no way to actually strategize aside from switch rails and bringing a stupidly powerful weapon. And really, that's just not how it's supposed to be done. Ah, now here's a Pokemon game I haven't talked about yet. Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia. I honestly have to say, I was actually very pleased with this game. Simple yet fun gameplay and a good story made this my personal favorite Pokemon spin-off. The gameplay actually made for some very interesting and very difficult but fair boss battles. But of course, when you have a game that has hard bosses, there's always going to be that one that just makes you want to quit entirely and probably, you know, break your controller. Or your DS in this case. Uh, yeah, for me, Kincaid's Drapion was that boss. At first, as the game's first big boss, the fight doesn't seem too bad. I mean, he would just emit a poison cloud, shoot poison missiles, and create toxic puddles. Compared to later fights with the likes of Heatran and Cresselia, this seems fine. However, what gets this fight on here is that when you come close to capturing him, he will constantly spam his poison cloud attack over and over and over and over again. Also, considering the fact that the cloud's range is too large for you to be able to circle Drapion, don't be surprised if you find his health being almost completely restored in a matter of seconds. You pretty much have to use Poké Assist for this battle if you want to have any hope. I remember starting with Pachirisu on my first playthrough, got to this boss and every Pokemon I had, including Pachirisu, were completely useless. I mean, there's not really a whole lot that can be said, just one repetitive attack completely screwed the fight up. And look, I know, there are other bosses that have more going on, but I found them more enjoyable and easier to manage than this thing. Look, I know it might seem absurd to put this guy on here just because of one attack, but just take another look at the title and there you go. Even then, nobody likes a boss that spams the same attack over and over again. Just ask Ty! Laugh, teleport, spawn some more. 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 I'm done with my life! Don't worry, buddy. I know how you feel. Except for the fact that I haven't played Castle Crusher. So next! Ah, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Yeah, I kinda went through a phase after my noobs impressions video on this game where I didn't really bother to play the game, but after doing this segment, I got re-addicted so I had to re-script and re-voice this part of the segment, so yeah. This game's fun combat, awesome weapons, clever sense of humor, and fantastic boss battles make it an absolute joy to play. Well, aside from the underwater battles, they're bleh. So let's talk about the absolute worst monster I've faced so far. That goddamn FISH! The Gobble, or Gobule, however you want to pronounce it, is easily one of the most annoying bosses on the list. You see, his main gimmick is that he will occasionally hide under the waterbed, and then when you're above him, he will strike. One of his other attacks also involves sucking you towards his mouth to chomp you. This mightn't seem too bad, but the main problem here is actually the area in which you fight him in. I wasn't too fond of any of the maps I have access to, nor do can I say I have a soft spot for the underwater battles but the Flooded Forest is by far the absolute worst. You see, in other maps, each section was open, so you had some breathing space, even underwater. Here, every section of the map is so crowded that you don't have a lot of space to work with, and the underwater sections here are absolutely atrocious. 
They're very narrow and the water is murky as sh so it's near impossible to see where the gobble is hiding until it's too late. Also, because of tight spaces, the camera is a total pain in the neck, so good luck trying to get into a good position to attack or dodge. Now, these problems are rectified when you head into the area where he rests, but that still doesn't excuse anything from before. And even then, you still have small monsters annoying you the whole time. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, but you first fight the Royal Ludroth here and he was hard and blah blah blah, all the usual stuff, you know, just to defend the fight. Well, at least he didn't have a patience trying gimmick, and he actually fought on land as well, so it was easier to get the upper hand. I know you can use the fishing rod to lure the gobble up onto land, but you're gonna have to wait a while for him to come to you, but you do have to keep in mind that you are kind of on a time limit. So yeah, even though it's 50 minutes, you'd be surprised as to how fast you could run out of time. Now, when you work around these things, the gobble isn't too hard, but it's still an incredibly annoying fight. Oh, and with regards to the flooded forest, the battle team there does not help at all. Now that I'm done with this guy, let's move on. I think that a lot of people can agree that the subspace emissary from Super Smash Bros. Brawl was... meh. It just didn't really feel all that well done and- oh, that freaking maze! Seriously, of all the ways they could possibly pad out game time, this was just downright lazy! With confusing navigation and fighting every single thing you fought before, yeah, it's not really fun, it's just a total mess. And then there's the final battle with the big bad of this game, Taboo. Okay, look, it's one thing to have the main villain come right out of nowhere, but to make the final battle for said villain as big a mess as the final level is just plain ridiculous. Now, I could easily have put Duan on the list, but at least he had an interesting idea for a boss fight. It was just poorly done. Taboo is just... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's actually the main thing that gets Taboo on here. When he goes into the background and uses his shockwave attack, it's an insta -kill. Oh, and it's nearly impossible to dodge, and you can't use final smashes, so yeah. Some of his other attacks can be easy to avoid, but if you get caught in one of them, then regardless of the difficulty, you better prepare for some serious pain. Practically every single one of his attacks lasts a good amount of time, and they can be quite difficult to avoid. And at certain points, he will cause an explosion when he teleports, so you better watch where you're standing. Overall, this fight is on here just because of how out of nowhere the villain is, and the fact that this fight is just a total mess. With punching attacks and no set pattern, good luck trying to keep your temper with this fight. And I mean it. I mean, you've just spent the past few hours going through that stupid maze all for total punishment. I know there's not much more I can say, so just do yourself a favor and stick to the game's other modes. Gonna be brutally honest here, guys, I was rather disappointed with Barely Default. But that's not saying I don't like it, even though I haven't really gotten the urge to play it recently. I just simply expected too much out of it. I still like the take on combat this time around. I like the characters, if Tiz is a bit bland, but a DM ring a bell? Yes. And the soundtrack is absolutely godlike. Not to mention the fact that the Asterisk boss battles were flippin' brilliant. The Crystal bosses, on the other hand, just made me want to stick sharp things in my eyes. I mean, they all had frustrating gimmicks that made them absolutely painful to fight. Orthros had two ahead, so you were basically fighting two mini-bosses, where Salka split into five different copies, and Chowmar alternated between two forms. One where you couldn't even freaking damage him. But these guys aren't on here, so let's talk about Gigas Lich. It's the propagator of doom as told of in the sacred texts of the orthodoxy. Okay, this has got to be one of the most infuriating bosses I've faced in a turn-based RPG. Much like the other Crystal bosses, Gigas has his own frustrating gimmick in the form of his ability Negative Power, which raises his physical and magic attack by 10% at the end of every turn. All I can say is that you try fight this guy without a White Mage or a Spirit Master, then you might as well just put a giant target on your head and ask him to punch you there. Oh, he also has an into death spell that nearly always works as well as plenty of other powerful attacks which combined with negative power 
can wipe your whole team out in no time. And guess what? Because of events in the game, you have to fight him again where he's even tougher. Sure, since he's a zombie, he can be damaged with healing spells and potions, so if you stop him on those, this fight does become a bit easier. But say you didn't know that, and you couldn't beat him. Even then, you're going to want to save up as much MP and potions for your team as you can, because unless you have Dispel, you will die. Basically, this guy combines all things I absolutely hate with a boss in a turn-based RPG. Incident spells, constantly increasing power, stacked with overpowered attacks already. Get this lich, it's just a bitch. Alright, this game's soundtrack was never actually released, so once I finish the build up, you're just gonna have to put up with the Devil Joe's theme from Monster Hunter. Whoa, the heck is this game? Yeah, I can't say I know anyone that actually knows about Heroes of Ruin, and it's a shame as well. I mean, it's by no means one of the best games on the 3DS, but it's still a lot of fun. Hell, as far as 3DS games go, it was actually pretty ambitious because it had a huge focus on multiplayer. The online was even complete with voice chat. But the general gist of the game is to kill and loot everything in sight, much like in Diablo or Borderlands. But the bosses were a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, you have great battles like with the Leviathan and King Keltus. And then you have Rigel! Firstly, Rigel is one of my absolute most hated video game characters. When you first meet him, he's just a snobby prick who thinks highly of himself and thinks of you as inferior. And then when you get Ataraxis' crystal fully charged to lift his curse, Rigel takes it, kills Edcart with it, attempts to take over Nexus, and Jesus, this guy's really flippin' generic. Case in point, he put the curse on Ataraxis to begin with, and now you have to kill him in the soul void. And I'll say this, if you're not playing as a gunslinger, then you are as good as dead. Simply put, this fight is a total mess in terms of how it works. Rigel attacks you with typical magic attacks, sends enemies after you, and puts down dark rings that bring you down to the speed of a drunken turtle if you stand in them. And as you chip away at his health, you have to destroy these pillars for some reason. Doesn't seem too bad now, does it? Well, remember how I said one attack can completely screw up the fight? Yeah, because Rigel literally forms a green orb of death that follows you around the arena, and touching it will drain all of your health in a second. Combined with those turtle paste rings, it makes what could have been an easy bite into a terrible one. You know the Tefer mites in Ratchet and Clank crack in time? Yeah, it's sort of like dealing with those in a way. You touch them, they slow you down, and kill you in a second. If you're a gunslinger, you can easily attack Rigel from a distance and easily avoid that orb. But playing a Vindicator or a Savage? Yeah. I don't think it's too bad with the Alakatek though, but this fight just takes its hateable character, makes his battle incredibly annoying and frustrating, and after all that, you don't even get to kill him! I won't say why, as I think I've spoiled enough, but just play the game for yourself and you'll see for yourself. I don't think I was able to convince any of you with this segment, but look, Rigel's the only boss in this game that actually sucks. The rest of them are okay or actually great. And I'm beginning to ramble. Lovely. Ah, Kingdom Hearts 1. I love this game. But Jesus, does it piss me off! Out of all action RPGs I've played, Kingdom Hearts 1 is probably the one I find the most cheaply difficult. And it's really hard to explain why. All I can tell you is that most of my sittings end with the controller on the floor. But the bosses range from easy to awesome to Dragon Maleficent. I mean, frustrating as hell. But yeah, Dragon Maleficent. By God, if there was ever a textbook definition for a difficulty spike in a video game, this boss would suit it perfectly. Now, Maleficent's first phase was actually rather easy, but it was an enjoyable fight. This? This? I might as well have been trying to retry Stage 6 2 with Ninja Gaiden! Dragon Maleficent is definitely one of the hardest bosses I've ever faced, so let's just take a look at what kind of attacks she has in her arsenal. Okay, she'll swipe at you with her claws, uh, not too bad. Bite you? Well, kind of a problem since you can only attack her head. Shockwave attacks? Well, sometimes they last for ages, so I hope you have good reflexes. Breathe fire and conjure fireballs at home in on you. Not too hard to avoid, but once you get hit, you're screwed. What else? Uh, oh, that goddamn broken hitbox tail attack! Yeah, this is probably the main reason this boss is so infamous. As it comes at you very quickly, it covers the entire arena, and I think this part goes without saying, but it hurts. Well, the rest of her attacks hurt as well, but seriously, this fight might only last about two minutes if you're not prepared for this. She hits way harder than she did previously, and she has a crap ton of health. 
thankfully you can save before this phase, but I just hope you don't mind rewatching that cutscene about half a million times with no means of skipping. I know, some people will be all like, eh, giant Ursula was worse and all that, and you know what? That's your opinion. Though personally, I had no trouble with her. In fact, I found her first phase to be a lot worse. The fight took longer than it should have done, but it wasn't exactly teeth grinding. This fight takes longer than it should, and it nearly made me break my controller! But PS2's controllers are total tanks, so yeah. But to finish this segment up, with punishingly powerful attacks with great area coverage and only one small specific area to attack that also puts you in massive danger, and maybe a little bit of bad partner AI thrown in, this fight just defines a difficulty spike in a boss fight for me. I get it. The first phase is supposed to be easier than the second phase, but it shouldn't have been as jarring as this. Though I will say, her fight in Birth by Sleep does look a little bit more manageable. And a little bit more fun, actually. Ah, <sighs> Hurry up, 2.5! Number two is the Time Eater. Right. How the hell did this thing not make it onto any other least favorite or worst bosses list? Okay, look, I know. Opinions. But really, this fight just sucks! Final battles in the Sonic franchise tend to be rather hit or miss, and this boss misses the mark so much that I would have made it into the Guinness Book of Records. The overall premise of this fight is to switch between classic and modern Sonic to dodge the time meter's attacks, make your way towards him, and then attack its core when you see the reticle. But doing so is far from simple, and it's not because of genuine challenge, but because of overall crappy design. You see, when the reticle appears, you might find yourself being unable to attack for no apparent reason. Sometimes he will just say nope and jump back 100 feet. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but whenever I had to stock up on rings because I was low, they always came up at the very bottom of the screen, and I didn't notice them because it was too late. Combined with the fact that the control in this fight is absolutely horrendous, you might find yourself dying a lot. All the while, he will bombard you with numerous attacks, INCLUDING... Seriously, I thought Sonic's friends were supposed to support him, not drive him, or rather us to insanity. I see what the time meter's doing. I KNOW IT'S A fucking HOMING SHOT, SO SHUT THE HELL UP! Seriously, it's bad enough that this fight has the potential to go on forever because of how poorly it plays out. But to have these guys repeating themselves over and over, it's just mental torture! I never bothered to beat this guy anyway because it would have driven me to insanity. But I've beaten the 3DS version either way, so I regret nothing. The 3DS version of this battle is miles better. Nothing amazing, nothing special, but it's still a good battle. In the console or PC version, just hold down that boost button, hang on to your sanity, and hope for the best. Oh, flip, I threw mine out at the beginning of the video. Well then, let's just move on, shall we? Just so I can diminish whatever I have left. If you're in the gaming family, then you most likely saw this coming. Even if you aren't? Unless you generally don't know me, then you probably still saw this coming. So here it is. The worst boss I've ever faced is Disciple Lorithia from Xenoblade Chronicles. I mean, sweet mother of Jesus Christ of countdowns on feckin' unicycles! Oh, Never before have I faced a boss so frustrating, so patience trying, and so flippin' annoying as the Rithia. Now, I could go on about how much I actually hate her character, but if I did, we'd never get this thing finished. And I'm sure you don't want to listen to that crap in a boss's list. You want me to save that for a most hated characters list I can't say I'll even make anytime soon. So, you probably want me to get straight to the fight. Well, before I do that, I just want to mention my overall thoughts on Xenoblade's bosses. They are, for the most part, completely cheap. Every boss just seems to have been a test of luck and patience instead of actual strategy. You could be overleveled as hell, and a boss could still kick your butt. Most have big and powerful attacks that you might have had no means of preventing. Just throw yourself at them a few times and you might eventually make it out victorious. Look, Xenoblade as a whole is an absolute masterpiece, but the bosses are the worst part, and the Rithia almost completely ruined it for me. So now that we're done talking about that, let's get to the fight itself. 
and needless to say, it's absolute shit. Firstly, let's take a look at her attacks. Aside from her normal slaps, which actually kind of hurt, she uses a spinning attack that induces a topple status. She can shoot a large and powerful beam and can cause a devastating explosion attack. And because of Xenoblade's combat system, there's no way to actually dodge these attacks, no matter how far away from her you are. Even if the pair of you are at opposite sides of the arena, the most you can do is rely on your Monado arts, but even then they are very limited. So you might perform one, protect yourself from an attack, but you have to wait for the art to cool down so you can use it again. But before it cools down, she uses another attack right after. Seriously, the visions are supposed to help you counter or protect from certain attacks, but here, they just remind you of how f***ed you are in this battle. And because of her stupidly high defense, you have to rely on ether attacks to do major damage. And with the exception of Monado's Cyclone, the only character who uses ether attacks to their full effect is Melia, who is way too frail. Oh yeah, those freaking Novas don't help at all. At the beginning of the battle, Lerithia will summon four of them, and they will bombard you with numerous troublesome attacks, some of which can inflict a status ailment, of course, until you kill them. Killing them won't work, though, as Lerithia will just summon another four later on. And, oh, you can only cause major damage to them with ether attacks as well. So, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. This fight seems like a total mess so far, doesn't it? Well, it's time for the cherry on top of the shit Sunday. As you probably noticed at this point, Lerithia not only hits like a tank, but is also the size of one. This wouldn't normally be a problem, if it wasn't for the ether pools that surround the arena. As you know, arena hazards in any game are tricky to navigate around, but in games where you can jump while you're engaged in combat, they're not the worst things in the world, as you can avoid them if you have the skill. But, if you throw arena hazards into an action RPG with a combat system that I believe is incredibly luck based and doesn't work for boss fights like this, and you've got a match made in the very fires of HELL! So how does Lerithia's massive size make this a problem? Well, because of the fact that she takes up about half the land in the arena, so she can easily end up pushing you into the ether pools, or send you flying into one with her beam attack. Oh, and the pools deal massive amounts of damage each second, and they can kill you in no time. And they're hard to get out of because of how deep they are, and your AI companions don't seem to realize that staying in there is a really bad idea. Also, remember when I said this game has a combat system that I think is very luck based and doesn't really work for these bosses? Well, it's because in the field, it's an absolute blast. But for drawn out fights that seem like they were designed for a hack and slash, it's just a matter of being really, really lucky. And in my case, luck was with me for about a half of one fight. I got her health below half, and then it decided to say nope, pulled some last minute bullshit ex machina, and I got killed despite how well I was doing beforehand. So that tells me this boss is borderline impossible if you don't have enough luck. At least with the time eater, you weren't too reliant on the luck of how much damage you were going to do and take. And to this day, I've never beaten this boss, or this game. And that is what gets this fight at number one. With every single element that you should not include in an RPG boss battle, including luck-based gameplay, they put it together and made for what is easily the worst boss battle I've ever had the displeasure of facing. Seriously, Xenoblade X better fix this game's combat system. But it has giant mechs. Can't really go wrong there. Right? Yeah, so... Surprisingly, I wasn't completely driven to insanity, so I'll see you all in the next one. Assuming it doesn't take me half a million years to get the next one out. What am I willing to put up with today? Not fucking this! I'm Superman! I'm My ass!